passar aqui. Então você só vai che chegar chegando. Valeu, abraço. There we go. That's how we're starting the podcast. That was your Brazilian introduction to Sandcast, Leandro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what you said, but was it appropriate? Or yeah, do we have course. to edit that out? <laughs> Usually I say bad words, but like for the end, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. but no. <laughs> so we got we got Dan coming in here, but we're just going to get started since we're all here. Yeah. Yeah. Dan is always late. Yeah. So yeah. welcome to the, the Sandcast. Time. For, to make you of comfortable, Ben Vindo. Thank you. Obrigado. <laughs> Obrigado. How's his accent? That was. It's perfect, man. Huh? Yeah. It's like a. Oh. Yeah. See you. Actually, See I don't you. know the word. Welcomes Benvindo. Benvindo. Yeah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see it written out first, you know? It was actually, it's been pretty helpful Obrigado. for me having learned a, a handful of Portuguese, being on the uh, broadcast for Volleyball World. Because uh -huh. when I get someone with an R, like Renato, uh -huh. I don't do the American Renato. Uh -huh. Renato, Renato Lima. Yeah. Renato. I had a couple of Brazilian viewers there. They were like, I appreciate you finally getting the R's right for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I always, it always threw me off uh, seeing uh, Hicks and Gracie. Yeah. I was like, mm, it says Rickson. Yeah. <laughs> Hickson. <laughs> and Rio. 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 Yeah. Rio de Janeiro. Yeah. You really got to know. Yeah. I was like, that cannot be how it's said. <laughs> Rio de Janeiro, right? Oh, super bad. <laughs> <laughs> Rio de Janeiro. Ja. Ja. Janeiro. I thought, is Oh, yeah, okay. But there's an R at the end of that. No. It's O. Janeiro. Janeiro. Yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, for our listeners who don't recognize the Portuguese-accented man or don't recognize people watching... My coach. We have his coach, yeah. Leandro Pinheiro. Pinheiro? Yeah. Pinheiro. Pinheiro. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And you just got back from Brazil, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Didn't go over there for the, the best of reasons, but I'm sure either way it was probably... Pretty yeah. good to get home for a bit. Yeah. It was super fun. Super. It was always good to be with your family. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, recover the mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, was a, was a hard moment. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, But before I had my best moment here in the United States with these guys. Yeah. yeah. And then was everything happened at the same time. For sure. So, and then I was with, uh, my family was here too, and then I was like, uh, I want to come back and start again, mm -hmm. start again in life. Yeah. 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 It's good. I always got to prioritize family. Yeah. It's family there, care, family right? here, family there, yeah. family yeah. here. Yeah. Now. now you got yeah. family everywhere. Yeah. This is the Brazilian barbecue family over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still have a picanha yeah. in the fridge, by the way. Oh. Maybe we cook it after. Yeah, well, <laughs> the grill master. Since you guys are here, <laughs> let's cook it <laughs> while the boys are in town. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You made the podcast exactly to have yeah, picanha. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I had the uh -huh. picanha, but I needed uh -huh. you to cook it right. It's good tactics. Yes, exactly. You taught uh -huh. him. You taught him about tactics. Yeah. <laughs> I still need. A, I still have a lot more work to do for tactics. Yeah. <laughs> I just listen. Just tell me. Tell me the strategy here. <laughs> That's but a this, tough part of the game. This has been what you're fourth year in the u.s did you come yeah. over when 1440 started up is that how like you and dan and arthur i feel like yeah, there's just no, an influx they, of brazilian coaches when 1440 got started yeah um i came uh, with a marcio invitation a okay. pepperdine coach he played with me in brazil in flamengo's club and uh, and then we worked together with Sheldon adriana so i have like a more than 30 years we know each other you and marcia yeah okay you guys go way back yeah <laughs> marcia was my setter that was amazing. the outsider yeah. <laughs> yeah. at university no in the, in the flamengo club okay and uh and then marcia told him about the opportunity i uh, i sent message for him telling like uh, i want to come to united states and then he told is exactly a good time for you come i have like a One, one project with P1440, I have a spot for head coach in Huntington. And then you fit super well. And then um, I set up everything, and boom, come. It worked out and, pretty uh, well. 
Yeah, and uh, about then, Arthur was uh, st uh, studying here before. Okay. He was doing uh, like uh, schools here. I don't know which school. Oh, I didn't is. know he was already here. Yeah, he okay. was with a uh, student visa. Okay. And then he changed her visa. And then was then came came for with model visa. Then came with visa a, for model. Oh, yeah. To model. Don, to then model. came out here for model. No. Yeah, model. <laughs> I thought you were saying he came out here with the model, but no, he <laughs> came out here to model. <laughs> to modeling, yeah. We're gonna have to ask him. Yeah, he, Dan's he about changed, to show up in about ten minutes, by the way. Yeah. That's why he has the long flowing hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I, when he arrives, we can make jokes. Oh, of course. Because like, uh, that's all it, we do with uh, him. Yeah. Then then uh, participate of a kind of Big Brother in Brazil. Yeah. And oh, then that's, that's right. why he he became a famous model there and can be, was able to come here. So a lot of so he was on Big Brother, the reality TV show yeah. in Brazil. In Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> and that's and a lot of people know him from that show. Yeah. Yeah. At some point, at some, tell at, the some story about it. Yeah, <laughs> at some time, what people recognize, but it's too fast, fast like a... He told me that he was doing good on the show, but then there was two girls that started hooking up with each other. <laughs> so he's like, of course, the fan bases aren't going to vote any of them off the show. So right. I had to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. It's funny because so Dan uh, took the volunteer assistant job at Pepperdine. Yeah. And now that Delaney's not there, she was laughing. She goes, those pep girls are just going to swoon over Dan. Oh, for sure. <laughs> the whole time. For sure. And get this Brazilian model as their volunteer yeah. assistant. Yep. And now he's full-time beach, too. Yeah, you guys are yeah, both full-time, obviously. I work indoor, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Club for... Yeah. SCVC. SCVC. Yeah. How many medals you got so far? In uh, every I have, no, I have two two, two okay. nationals, uh, third bronze medal. Uh, but uh, when I was in Surfside, and then I tr I I switch clubs. Switch clubs this year. Yeah. For CBC. Got to make time for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you had a heck of a run yeah. as head coach this year, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I was just look. I was just continuing the the job with Loyola. And right. I just set up, like, the job of Loyola was already really good. Yeah. And we made a good team. Yeah. We liked that team a lot. And, like, yeah. I'll have fun and good practice. And uh, um, I think I just put, like, more padrons, huh? We set up a lot of new padrons yeah. in the team, especially mm -hmm. in the setting. Right. And then becomes a padron to, to, to make defense, too. Yeah. And set up tactics better. Yes. Um... But like um, I talk with Loyola every day. He's one of my best friends in the yeah. United States. Yeah. And uh, he always like uh, we always uh, change ideas and talk a lot like um, about everything. Yeah, that's super so, helpful because yeah. I mean, the the coaching change when Loyola got hired by USA Volleyball was like all right. We had a coach all year and now we <laughs> lost him. And then he was ready. But you, he was at every practice anyway, yeah. so you already knew everything. Yeah. The only problem was you couldn't travel yet, and so we went. We left and went on the road by ourselves for a little while, and apparently we needed a chaperone <laughs> to play good. <laughs> but when we came back, it was like super seamless. It was actually really fun for me to like have a fresh perspective because we just been hearing Jose's voice for for three years or something like that. Yeah. So it's been fun to have a fresh perspective and a little more of a tactical approach. Yeah, for sure. I feel like Loyola is like me, like thinks like me is just like not super deep into the tactics and all that, which I, I'm not either. But it's nice to have someone on our team that is. Trevor's yeah. kind of just does. He's a little better maybe thinking than me on his own, but he's going to keep it to himself for the most part. You have to yeah. like pry it out of yeah. him. So it's good to have you like thinking for us. Finally. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a kind of me and Loyola too, you talk about like a, Try is more my, from my side of like a, a coaching, and travel is more for Loyola side. Uh, travel is more like you need like a more motivation, shout mm -hmm. like that, uh, yeah. and uh, and uh, he doesn't like uh, go sometimes for his own or on the tactics. Yeah, but uh, this guy like is like follow everything like in the tactics and see mm -hmm. everything and. Uh, mm. uh, and uh, but nowadays, and, and uh, I, I'm like that about tactics because I, I watch videos a lot. 
He's like saying a, tactics, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> tactics. <laughs> I, I have like a... Uh, that's uh, the first conversation I had with them when I, I, I st- they invited me to be their head coach. I told them, uh, I have to change a lot with both of you. Mm. Because they know, as assistant, I was arriving in the practice exactly when it started, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, I, like, uh, uh, I talk my, my things to Loyola. I didn't watch so much games. Only, only Loyola would say, like, ah, this game was good. Did you watch? And say, no, but I'm I going to see. And then I can change ideas with him. Uh, when I became the coach, the head coach, that thing that changed. Mm-hmm. I was arriving in the practice now, like, before then. Yeah. Uh, to set up everything, to... Uh, I send the plans for them. What mm-hmm. what you gonna do for the week? And uh, and uh, I start watching videos a lot. Like uh, even competitions, like uh, in Europe, I was watching yeah. everything to see the ideas and to see what like I can filter and can get better. What happened in the world and bring for them. Yeah. And uh, and then I that's the thing. Like nowadays, in any sport, in my opinion, high level. Uh, don't have a way to don't don't play high level with tactics nowadays. Like you, you can have amazing player, but like uh, you have to, to the game be easy and you make your athlete expend less energy. Mm-hmm. Like the competition is long, like many tournaments one after other. Yeah. If you give the game for them to resolve the problem more easy, you have like many many incomes for your team, like energy. Mm-hmm. Physically, even mental, and just set up everything easy. Huh? Yeah. Um, and uh, and then like a uh, tactics is a you after you make these patterns, make a lot of patterns, you can make better tactics. Yeah. You know what I'm like uh, I'm not say say our no, secret don't, here. Don't not say our <laughs> secret here. I I will say just one thing. Our pattern nowadays, the 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 is we. We we have everybody knows we have to serve really well. We have to go to the serve. Mm-hmm. But what happens sometimes uh, when the serve goes in one like the pass broken for one position? Yeah, different. Like the players don't hit the same ball from all positions in the net. Right. They have another another incidence depending if they go more inside, more outside, and uh, mm-hmm. and that's the the way we set up better. I think can help uh, was super helpful for us. Uh, we are going to the serve, but they know, uh, uh, depends on the set is, we have one way to block. Right. Depends of the set goes right now for us, about our patterns. Yeah. You, because you set up patterns. Yeah, our blocking strategy and, and changes then based on the, where they're setting the ball. Yeah, yeah, the blocks change where the ball, set up the ball. So we go to one point with different different locations. Yeah. Uh to the pink can be one, to more the middle can be two. And then um, and it's, it's, it, it, exactly for them was two blockers before. Yeah. And uh, was a huge difference about the defense. I think helping even the defense, they start to make more defense because the defense was not for one position already waiting exactly that ball. They are like uh, waiting the ball there and reading more the game because if the set goes in one position, they have to move for the other position. Right. Yeah. And then I think this is like was uh, amazing for them. Yeah. Amazing that, for I, them. I think we're both. Neither of Trevor or I are very very tactical. We're very read oriented. Like I like to know where what my um, responsibility is, so I just know that, and then I can just do whatever I want in between. If I don't know what my responsibility is and I don't know what the guy's doing behind me, then I get a little trying to do too much kind of thing. I get a little lost. But yeah, for us to have a system where we're we know what we need to do, but we're free to read within it mm-hmm. is like perfect for Trevor and I because we're both very just like trust our instincts kind of players. Yeah. So I feel yeah, like that- it was, it's been a nice nice adjustment. Whereas before, I felt like I was getting a little too stuck on defense. Like I'm just do this and then go there and. It was just too... A little too rigid for you. Too rigid for yeah. me. Yeah. And for Trevor. I feel like, like you said, you're both such instinctual players. Trevor never players. did, though. <laughs> no. Loyola was like, or, you know, it was like, <laughs> this is what we're doing, go here. And I'm doing everything perfect. Maybe going an extra foot just yeah. because. Trevor's like, no. He's like, oh, I'll go that way a little bit <laughs> if you want. But 
He's like basically in read the whole time. I'm like, that's not the drill. Yeah. You're cheating. <laughs> He's just walking into digs all the time and drills. <laughs> yeah. But it's, yeah, it's good to know, recognize those kind of things. And it's really hard to recognize those about ourselves. So like hear, just hearing that, like that, yeah. I'm, even like hearing how his coaching style is a little more catered to mine versus Trevor like Loyola just yelling at him yeah. sometimes. That's what I was going to say. That I feel like you and Jose were such good personalities mm-hmm. for trying Trevor because like, you guys just give it to each other the whole time. I mean, Trevor's calling you bad names and you're calling Trevor <laughs> yeah, bad uh, names and Jose's yelling at try and they're pitting each other against each other. And then it ends uh-huh. up like after like you're just grilling out here, doing a Brazilian Is style barbecue. Here, yeah. I feel like it's just such a good little community. I mean, you guys are, you uh-huh. know, a little family. And it's funny, like, you're all so close because you can, like, you can dig at each other. And you uh, knew that they needed that yeah. to, to really get the practices going. And I know that you love, and it seems like you guys just have fun, too. Yeah. The, but that's the, the Brazilian way. Like, yeah. uh, in Brazil, everybody has nicknames. <laughs> yeah, bad nicknames. <laughs> and then you, it's, it's when you start picking, like, with the nicknames of the other and make, like, jokes and everything. And just wait till Dan shows up. You get Dan and Leandro together. <laughs> Yeah, and then like, uh, uh, yeah, and then like with these guys, they like that that thing. Yeah, and they don't care. Like, uh, and that's why too during the game, I I love when they start talking with the other teams too yeah. because they put them like a uh, up in the game. Yeah, mm-hmm. give you up for them, and then like uh, and and uh, that's the way they. It's good for them. Yeah, is uh some teams some some players like uh be be shy or be like a uh, oh. You cannot, but yeah. then it's, if it's work, yeah. you just need like a, <laughs> being the philosophy. Yeah, just Man, make you know, stuff um, up. What happened today in the Dubai bronze medal match? Oh. So, you know, Evan Corey likes, yeah, to, likes, to, likes to bring it, likes to chatter. Yeah. Well, they pounded Pedro and Arthur in the first set of the bronze medal oh, match. Started talking to and Pedro, and then Evan bounced one around Pedro. Good luck. And Evan does that like, come on, like right at Pedro. So Pedro starts chatting back. Pedro hits the next one. Then he turns to the crowd and he's like, like bringing him up. Pedro loves loved that, it. Getting and into it. Wrong Evan, guy to talk Evan to. Evan barked up the wrong tree. Wrong he found guy. out, and then it was just nothing but Pedro and Arthur the rest of the time. And the next two sets were some of the worst volleyball I'd seen Evan play because Pedro was ready. I was like, uh, all right, maybe don't yell at Pedro. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's that's a, the Brazilian if Evan's way. smart. Just own that lesson. And learn from that one because that's one of those guys you do not want to wake up, especially at this point in his career where he's like way more tired, not jumping the way he yeah. normally does. He needs someone to like chatter. That's funny. I didn't see it. I I turned it on right when Pedro was like starting to talk uh, at the end for the win, and he yeah. looked gassed. But he's like, I loved it. I was like, I wonder if he got into it with Corey at all. Yeah, and then it, you say it. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was a fun match because right after. You know, match ends, and then I think the Brazilians do a good job. Like mm-hmm. these guys, you talk trash, game's over. And then him and Evan, like, shook hands, hugged it out. It was great. It was just good sportsmanship. Yeah. But I, I loved watching Pedro get fired up, man. It, it was uh, It's cool it was watching good. the Brazilian teams because they give it, you know, Alisson, Guto. Oh, for sure. Like, they're, they can all get it. Although George and Andre, they seem a little bit more relaxed. Uh, yeah, the other they are, they are, yeah, they are calm boys. Like, <laughs> calm boys? <laughs> calm boys. Really calm, boy. <laughs> Dan. Hey, the horse. Brazilian you got number him. two. Oh, yeah. Someone needs a translator here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone needs a translator. Right? We brought the translator <laughs> in. <laughs> I mean, I mean, our fans I mean, are just, okay. our fans are, like, questioning everything right now. Were you guys what? putting a subtitle? Oh, right. <laughs> We're going to have to. Do you want uh, a drink, Dan? We got, oh, yeah. We got waters, beer, seltzer. Ah, beers. Beer. Just because of because the beer. Of course. <laughs> I ran out in my house. And I have the picanha that we didn't cook the other night. So, there you go. You know. We have something for you guys to cook after. There you go. <laughs> well, Welcome. He, 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 the chef. He came it, just because the beer, and they invite me just because the picanha. Yeah, exactly. There See, we're go. smart here on this podcast. I mean, why not? We right. know what we're doing. Salud. 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 Oh, my accent. We fought water. Salud. Yeah, the only <laughs> one with salud here. Awesome. Yeah, so, well, just joining us, 
on the blue chair with Leandro is uh, Brazilian number two, the translator. The guy, I think you put more hours into coaching than anyone I know. Like every time I'm on the beach, I'm like 29th Street, there's Dan. Pepperdine, there's Dan. Third Street, somehow Dan's still here. <laughs> and, he's our, and he's our assistant. <laughs> he's so the assistant. Head coach when Leandro was gone. And, and he's the assistant for Brandy too. And and Mel. And now, uh, yeah. He was. Oh yeah, Brandy and Mel. Let's see what's going to happen now. You just live on the beach now. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> nice yeah, why not? I just go home to shower. Right. <laughs> shower, have a beer, and go back. <laughs> Perfect. Heck yeah. But there was a time that I was running, and he was practicing, and I was running. Only one more, and coming back, and he was coming back. <laughs> Only one more. <laughs> and, yeah. I was, yeah. and I'll come down a little bit this season, this yeah. part of the year, just yeah. relax. Well, now bit. it's going to get cold, so you don't want to be on the beach that much. I mean... We'll see. We'll see. We already spilled your secrets earlier about um, your big brother experience. Oh my God! We we <laughs> just <laughs> from yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Yeah. I didn't yeah. have anything else to talk <laughs> about. <laughs> talking about me. Dan's yeah. a model and a reality TV star. I yeah, know. I, I I did that. You know. It was a nice experience. I'm, I'm yeah. My first chance to get a million. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. I was when ten days to dollars. get a million. Ten days, bro. If you if you lasted ten more days, you would have got a yeah. million. But can you tell us what happened? Remember uh, what you told me? He, he told you? No, I told what you told no. me. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, the you two, know. The you know, you go, you go, you go, like, they, they, they vote, right? Who's yeah. dating and who not. And uh, I went against a girl that was dating another girl yeah. uh, inside the house. So I passed by the, the shower and it was, like, an open shower so everybody can see inside. And they were showering with clothes, but they were, like, rubbing soap in each other and I was looking at that scene I was like if I was outside I would remove myself and let this way way better to watch this I was just there sitting look to the sky like I'm gone like, I'm gone get out of me there goes a million dollars oh yeah that was like a million dollars like oh okay yeah gone <laughs> next time that's wild and now you're just making Millions coaching on the beach out here. Millions of histories. <laughs> yeah. millions, of, yeah. millions of memories, yeah. Millions of memories, yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, you guys have both, you've had such a crazy year. Because you started out, you're coaching Maria Clara. Mm -hmm. um, still, Is she still practicing, playing? No, she's back in Brazil now. Okay. But it was Maria and uh, Lexi Dunenberg from yeah. UCLA. Then Maria and uh, she played with Abby. Okay. And that was... That was nice too, uh, and then the last in Chicago with uh, Melissa and Brandy. That had to have been fun. How was that? It was four points to a gold medal. Yeah, that was awesome. And Melissa, for me, I didn't know her. Yeah, uh, and it was a really good surprise, like how coachable she is, and uh, then give me all the information, give me everything. Uh, tell me what you're seeing, what you want me to do, and that was really nice to work with her. Yeah, her. that's cool that someone at that high of a level, I mean, that's a world champion, yeah. an Olympian, the best defender in, in Canada right now, uh, that she's that open-minded and coachable, especially to someone that you'd never met. Yeah. That's a pretty cool thing. Yeah, my contact with her was just like, hi, hi, and all of a sudden we were playing and then we went to all the way to the final. So that was really nice. That's really fun. Really good. Really good. And then now, I mean, you're the only one to see, who's seen him in action. That's the new team. Yep. And by that time, people were asking, now, are, are they a new team? And no one, no one knew. And uh, I think no one was expecting that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I mean, happened. It's exciting for the tour. Yeah. yeah. I think those are the two most exciting Canadian players, right? Not necessarily the best. Obviously, Pavin was way up there, and um, Sophie is, is like really exciting prospect as well. But like, yeah, people love to watch Brandy and Mel play. So yeah. now that they're on the same team, it's exciting. That's made yeah. for volleyball TV. Volleyball TV. <laughs> yeah. that, I'll drop that in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a different characteristics of a team now with Melissa. Yeah, it was with Sophie. I think more finesse game a little bit. Yeah. yeah, it's a defense team, right? Right. Because we have one of the best blockers in the world, one of the best defenders in the world. So mm -hmm. even if the side out is 
not there, we're gonna compensate the side out yeah, with yeah, the yeah. defense and transition. Scoring points. Yeah. Yeah. And, and serve and uh, all the good stuff. I mean Brandy worked for two weeks hand setting oh. with us and uh he hand set at the in Paris. Right. Okay. And he just got she got called once. She got called once. And FIB is calling everything right now, right? Everything, oh, yeah. yeah. Evan and Logan got called three times in the third set of the bronze medal Against match. Pedro? Yeah, I respect cool. him for keeping going for it, but yeah, I mean, when a, a fifth of the points are are being called, doubles, it was, it was tough to watch. They've at least lightened it up a little bit, but... Oof. Yeah, it was, it was tough. Yeah. How, how do you guys see this, this, this rule? Because it's not a rule. Oh, uh, I mean... I don't know. It hasn't really affected me, to be honest. Hey, have you have, have you hopped on the world tour since they even changed the rule? Uh, when did they change it? Stad. Was that before after world, world champs? At, right after world champs. I only played in Portugal. Okay. You know, and it wasn't a factor. Yeah, because it was it was crazy in Stad. I yeah, think that was that was insane. I think the rule change is is okay, but the, just the timing of it was funky. Doing it in the middle of the season with no warning. And no reasoning. Like, yeah. just wait till the end of the year and then say, hey, we're going to get a little bit stricter okay, on the hands. But, but here's my question. What is the rule right now? No one knows. The okay, rest don't so know. so there's no rule. <laughs> that, <laughs> oh, that, yeah, there's exactly. no rule. It's uh, what a ref, it will see, like, uh, before couldn't spin. Right. So one spin, whistle. I think that's the easiest thing. If it doesn't spin, that means you didn't double it. I mean, really, right? The physics of it. Yeah. Even and if your hands are like all deformed and sideways and coming yeah. off of it differently, your hands left the ball at the same time somehow. Wherever they are on the, like your hands left the ball at the same time, that's yeah. but this thing you can't like lift uh, it, but this thing it's since I coached since 2000, I know the it's the same story. Yeah. Like I uh, have many many meet, meetings in the the world tour and uh, they put the, the 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 referees with in front of the and say the rule of uh, setting gonna change and uh, yeah and it's always like that like <laughs> yeah. I mean, like at least in li these twenty years maybe it was ten meetings about that yeah and it, and then it becomes the same yeah yeah it it's, becomes the same hey good news you can set now <laughs> <laughs> you too because you yeah. both set you cannot both set <laughs> you cannot both set between and, the two you know? yeah no <laughs> you know the, the problem that I have in my back, it's because I played with him a couple of times. Like, uh, here. Yeah, it's not a ball, it's a brick. It. That's a problem in the back because it doesn't have like a limit. He, he goes like to hit like a crazy horse. <laughs> the crazy horse. And then everybody know like, or oh, go inside and bounce it, or oh, go there and like, and when he's indoor, or go down in the basketball like, <laughs> <laughs> like an airplane. The backboard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, have like a... my partner is love to play with me because the, the ball is going to end with me. <laughs> <laughs> the point ends with me, bro. Uh, one sure. way or another. Sure. Don't one me. way or another. Or gonna, or do, yeah, exactly. <laughs> one way or another. No wrong, long rallies if you serve me. Just set it and walk back to serve receive or yeah, <laughs> serve it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. We were literally just talking about just the fun culture you guys developed with Try and Trev. Just how much like... Leandro could give shit to Trevor, who could give shit to Jose, and it was just like this brotherly way of talking. And then you come in here and you're like, "You suck at setting." <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's all good love. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I, at least I can still hit a ball. You can, yeah. I don't think I've seen Batore here uh, try I, to hit a ball. I don't need a hit. <laughs> I don't need a hit. I just put the ball on the floor. I look the game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know him. It's mine is an intelligent game. He's uh, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. So you have to crazy, figure it out. The you crazy know horse. Yeah. Crazy no. horse. I know him since 13 years old, and I also never saw him hitting a ball. So, because back in the days he used to jump a, a toast bread. Yeah, you know? could jump that high. Yeah, that high. No, this is a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Laying down. But that's true. <laughs> we thought it was just because the sand, even indoors? I uh, know, indoor. I have like a. <laughs> uh, um, I started about that. Indoor, I was really good to. I was really good passer. Yeah. So receive. And uh, indoor, I usually use the block a lot to, to hit and go out, to hit and go out. Yeah. One game was playing against us, Flamengo against Fluminense. Yeah. The coach told to don't jump. 
I was doing all all points, 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 and like, but always hitting the hand, hitting the hand here, hitting the hand to the side, and, yeah. and then he told, no jump anymore, don't jump anymore. And just for be alone because I yeah. don't have power too oh, much to the hit. Block? They told the block. They not told to jump? the block don't jump. That was my indoor game too. Just don't jump. the block off the line. Don't jump. And then <laughs> and they, they 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 do it. They do it at two points, three points, and then I have to start like going yeah. hard yeah. hitting. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you tip? You just tip over. Yeah, I tip over. <laughs> jumbo. No six jumbo. Man, six man jumbo. Wait, so Flamingo, is that the same as the soccer club? Yeah. So it's like you're up where? Is there, is there, it's just uh, youth, and then you have all the levels all the way up to the top pros. Yeah, yeah? it's the biggest like uh, 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 club in, in Brazil. Like, yeah. uh, one of the biggest uh, has Flamengo, Sao yes. Paulo has Corinthians. Uh, and uh, all the good coaches played in Flamengo before. Loyola played in Flamengo, I played oh, really? in Flamengo, Fiapo played in Flamengo. Played huh. in Flamengo. Uh, mm-hmm. The father of uh, Guto, Superboy. Yeah. Big. <laughs> Superboy. Played in, <laughs> play in Flamengo. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Marcão played in Flamengo, too. Wow. And he's, is he in Australia? No, oh, Marcão is uh, in São Paulo. He's the head okay. coach of Suzano Indoor right now. Okay. What, yeah. He did go to Australia, though, didn't he? Or I'm thinking of Mar- Marcos he, Miranda. He, was, was it quarantine? And oh, he coached yeah, yeah. via Zoom call. Oh, yeah, yeah. no. Uh, yeah. yeah. But it was indoor. Okay. Was indoor, so. Got it. Yeah. And uh, he said that it's crazy because the best players, you know, in Brazil and here, you want to play the best matches. You want to be part of the team all the time. And yeah. he said that the best players were like, okay, I'm not playing this tournament because I'm going to go to this place. And they're just like, no, I just want to play this, this, this one. I'm okay. I'm not yeah. playing. I'm like, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> Dang. That's, that's weird. Uh we played against each other like a thousand times by the beach. Yeah. Never beat me. But it's part it's part of life. And never made one semi final. <laughs> and uh, but we played like play with each other in an indoor on an indoor team that they brought all the players from the beach and created an indoor team. Yeah. And Masu was the, Masu was the Masu coach. Was the coach. In that time. In yeah. that time. Yeah. No way. Well, that was yeah. the, the only time that we played together. It's so funny how the Brazilian community here has known each other for so long. Like, you guys played together as kids. Marcio coached and played with you guys. Do you guys know? I mean, we have Fiapo, Pompilio Arthur, Pompilio. Pompilio was your was coach. Was my coach. <laughs> no way. Pompilio was my coach from 15 until my 19. Man. Yeah. And you guys make up half of the coaches. Maybe more. Yeah, that are even. I mean, available. when you throw Jose in there as well, right? Yeah. I mean, Jose is now the coach of everyone, right? In yeah. the US. I don't know who the coach is coaches now. <laughs> yeah, <He> coaches <laughs> everyone. Yeah, yeah. except us. <laughs> <laughs> he just got turned from our coach to everybody, <laughs> everybody else's, else's coach. <laughs> and one time there at 29th was uh, Loyola, me, Leandro, and then Márcio. No, yeah. and then Pompino and Márcio. Yeah, was everybody like. Uh, a couple of feet from each other. That yeah. was that was a good Did time. Did you guys talk about coming to California as kids? Was that kind of a, a dream thing to do, or did it just sort of work out that way and everyone just kind of ended up in Hermosa Beach, the little Brazil? <laughs> yeah, it's it was was never like a it was never a dream. I think it, the things works like a yeah yeah when um. Uh, my dream was to only coach high level, like, uh, and then uh, and make make Olympic games and this yeah. thing, and then uh, and then the United States show up when it started like being like a uh, Brazil start being like a bad situation economy and uh, yeah cannot make more money and like uh, and then I think uh, for everybody it was like that and Brazil start be bad economically. And then everybody start thinking to come here. Okay. New opportunities. Yeah. And uh, of course we know like uh, California is the uh, is like uh, the uh, the the mecca the mecca of volleyball. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Is that how yeah. it's seen in in Brazil too? Because like internationally, I think everyone thinks outside of here, Rio is probably the mecca. Yeah. Of, uh, of beach was volleyball. before. Was before. before. Yeah. When uh, during. 
2000 until maybe 2010, uh, all players in the world make the the, the press season in Brazil. Mm. I, so like uh, we we knew like everybody make extra money. Mm-hmm. The coaches make extra money, and the 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 teams send messages say, "Ah, oh, can I practice with you December, January?" Uh, yeah. And um, at that time, I coach uh, a lot. I coach France. I coach. Uh, I coach six and six. The French guys. One of them married with uh, with the partner uh, of uh, April Ross. I forgot. Alex Alex. Climbing. No, before. Oh, Kerry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andy Sess. Yeah, Andy um, Sess. Jen, Jen Cassie. Cassie. Okay. Jen Cassie, Cassie married yeah. the French guy. Way back, Jen like, no, uh, well, not Carrie. Not, not yeah, yeah, you're back. Like, <laughs> uh, five partners. <laughs> I go to Japan. I go to Belgium, Netherlands. That time, like uh, everybody goes there to yeah. make the press season. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. And you went to the Olympics in uh, Beijing. I went to 2004 in Athens oh, and 2018 in, in Beijing. With so, Belgium. No, 2004. Oh, no. I went as assistant. Uh-huh. Assistant for Sheldon. from Sheldon Brazil. Adriana. Brazil. Okay. Yeah, and then we made a, a silver medal. Nice. Yeah. Do you, do coaches get one? No. No. Unfortunately not. We can, <laughs> we'll have to print you one or something. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then Belgium 2008 Pekin Beijing I was the head coach. Okay. Mm. How did you get the job to coach Belgium? Of all places, like so, how did that work? Exactly like uh, because the pre- the the press season, they went to Brazil to press. Yeah, they are looking for a, a coach. I move this. Uh, uh, Marcio, Marcio actually talked with them. Yeah, and then he set up for me be the assistant. Okay, and then I was like, a, but he was not traveling. He was here. Okay, and then. Um, uh, he was not able to travel, and then he put me to travel. Okay. Until at some point he he left the team, and then I stay with the team traveling as a head coach. Okay. Uh, so did you then, did you like live in Belgium with them, or did they kind of was their home base sort of Rio? No, when they were traveling? I was in Belgium. I live in Belgium. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Where'd you live? Yeah. I think the Belgium. Name, Belgium's cool, man. It, yeah, it is. The name was Opurs. Okay. Like a, this is a, for, even for us, it's difficult to say. <laughs> uh, Belgium. It's a yeah. small country. Yeah. It's basically like Los Angeles, right? It's, isn't it really small? It's tiny. It's, yeah. it's yeah. really small, raining a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really different culture. Yeah. Like, it uh, uh, was really hard to find a gym there to work out. Really? Yeah. They, they drive a lot to, to work out. We drive a lot to go to the press. But was what of they they are the first time they classify uh, classified to Olympic Games in Belgium in general oh, awesome. in beach indoor was the first time in the history they really classify cool. in volleyball yeah so that's why too like it's a new sport in the country right yeah and nowadays um, I have the contact with them in Facebook mm. and I saw they set up uh, volleyball schools like that's that's I think is how we start like right. in the country mm. invest more and like. Uh, Show up more the sport for yeah. the the country. I think they have a decent indoor national team. Now they have. Yeah. Now they have. Yeah. Yeah. I played uh, one of my favorite events I played last year was in Leuven. It's kind of this little college town, and they had the university had one of the best indoor beach facilities I've ever played in. Oh really? It was amazing. Huh. Yeah, it was really cool. It's crazy. You we lucked out with the, the weather. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it wasn't raining. It shit rain on the qualifier day and uh-huh. so Delaney played in like 45 degrees and oh. just downpour and then the rest of the time was absolutely perfect it was that. like 75 and sunny oh. yeah gotta love that it was it was perfect it's, it's crazy amazing. just to see where volleyball takes you like you lived in exactly. Belgium and we have, <laughs> you we have and Japan too Japan a little bit only oh, yeah. yeah that's right Japan was with them yeah yeah as assistant and then the Japan team what was his name? Uh, the Yu Kochikawa. Kochikawa. You. Yu Kochikawa. He was one of the best outsiders in Japan Jumpei. before. Yeah, they tried and to jump. They wanted him to learn beach and carry the beach torch, but yeah, but the quarantine, they uh, lost the sponsors. Oh, cause it during uh, the quarantine. COVID came. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. When I come back from Japan, was every, was when uh, ever everything was closed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then um, everything was closed here too. And then they, after like uh, 20 days, he, he, he sent uh, an email to Leandro. 
We lost all the sponsors. Oh. I think I'm gonna come, he come back to Indoor. The cat climbed yeah. the roof. Yeah, the cat climbed the roof. <laughs> the cat. And you know you're this not, joke. You're not, you're not, you're not this joke. joke here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you want to give some bad news to someone, you need to prepare the person. Yeah. And this is a joke because uh, a guy traveled and just arrived a letter for, to him say, hey, uh, your cat passed. But and then he complained and said, you cannot give me this news like this. You have yeah. to prepare me. But, first, but write the first letter, like, <laughs> the, cl the cat climbed the roof. Right, right. And then a couple of days after, you send me another letter. The <laughs> cat <then> fell off. <laughs> and then the <laughs> next letter said, hey, the cat passed. Right. So prepare myself. <laughs> and then the joke starts and the guy travel again. And all of a sudden, arrive a letter say, hey, your mom climbed the roof. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so nowadays, everything that bad happens, hey... The, the team climbed the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine you uh, and Leandro trying to communicate? Because you's English wasn't very oh good. Oh my god. Yeah, no, I was there. That's why. It and happened. it's funny enough that his name's you. So yeah. it's like. Oh, so you, oh he, he was here for a while, right? The yeah. yeah. Japanese you, player? You remember? Okay. You? Uh, yeah. You? <laughs> this is like an you, Austin Powers story. You, you, <laughs> you, 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 that's great. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's nice. We have like uh, opportunities to travel and uh, a couple months ago, I think it was Mark who's offered uh, to go to coaching Philippines because... But Marcio or... No, Marcos. Marcos, Marcos. Marcos. okay. Yeah, because people call him and ask him, like, oh, we need coaches. And we need coaches for a year, two years contract. And, uh, and then he, he kind of put the coaches there or offered to us. And, yeah. But it's nice. We have a chance to go to different places. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. I feel like Brazilian coaches are just in such high demand, both in the U.S. and the Philippines. I know that China reached out to Marcio. I mean, you, you're working with. Canadians, everyone is just like, all right, well, Brazil has won a whole lot of beach volleyball things, so we're just going to get all the Brazilian coaches yeah. we can get. <laughs> Thank God. And it's, just a, <laughs> and it's just a different culture out there. Like, Americans, like, there's, you go to Brazil and play on the beach, and they have three assistants, they set up nets, and these are just people that live on the beach, run the courts there. They're not even, like, anyone's specific coach, right? Yeah. You, you can have eight people at a practice just for you and you pay them what like a hundred dollars hundred bucks and you have eight people eight people versus you don't check one ball one coach here for a hundred bucks kind of thing yeah and that's like kind of a steal yeah so <laughs> and, and, but there's so many more coaches there and so many more people that grew up playing yeah. the game and just like and at a super high level versus here is like uh, no one's gonna go down that pipeline of coaching from a young age or anything yeah everyone goes was, gotta play indoor or something like that the other thing too, I think like um, uh, the the school, the university in Brazil of sports is really strong. Mm, it's yeah. like um, that is uh, you study for all sport and it, you you can filter sometimes. Um, mm. You you can use one thing you learn in the university from one other sport in your sport, mm. and the change of the ideas and the, the knowledge is really good. Like uh, because we study of. Uh, and other coaches or, or, or a student who want to be coached from the other sports and you trade and make some homeworks together or some works together like yeah. a, to, to make a presentation. And that's the, these, these things, this, this contact with another people on other sports is really good. I think like it put you more connected with the sport. And, uh, and uh, uh, CBV, like a, uh, since 2000, since really like a CBV always did like a lot of like a courses since the beginning. What's CBV? CBV is Brazilian Confederation. Okay. okay. And, uh, and the course of CBV is really strong too. Like uh, 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 for you be a coach, you have to be the level one, level two, level three, depends on the level you coach, if international or oh, inside yeah. the country. And, uh, and the course is... Uh, is you have to go for one facility, yeah. stay a week or two weeks, huh. and uh, and during this you you have classes with the other coaches with more experience. Like they teach like for you like uh, all stuff, tactics too, huh. the ways to use tactics, and for you uh, and every day too in the afternoon 
It's, it's all day. Morning is in the class, afternoon is in the in the court, and all all. all uh, uh, and then in the end, you have a, a, a test for you be for for you pass. Yeah. And uh, uh, you have to write this like the the right test and yeah. the and in the court, they give you one one uh, one subject for you like uh, you got you got one team your team is has these qualities these skills and you're gonna play against this team. This is an example. Mm-hmm. Or they put like that. You are in the middle of the season. How is your periodization for this situation? Like uh, how your athlete has to be in the how in physical condition, how your athlete has to be working there. Yeah. So it's not like a, it's not easy. Right. Yeah. You really have to work and sit like uh, there and work with your group, like if you want to make a good presentation. Right. Do you understand? And, uh, and uh, the, the, in the court, like uh, every day in the afternoon when you go to the court, you you learn. That's where you like you learn a lot, have a lot of ch- uh, uh, change of knowledge with the other coaches, and they say no, this is not like a uh, uh, you cannot do it. And uh, one thing I, I like a lot that's uh, I I I carry for all my life. Yeah, and I use it with you guys too. Uh-huh. Uh huh. If you use more material like uh, things in the court and have ideas is yeah. because you show more knowledge, man. And then you get more points in the end. Yeah. So that's why, like, uh, like they, they they make us to use more things, like uh, elastic Oh, elastic yeah. Elastic uh, Yeah. Elastic. The cones, elastic lines. Cones. Uh, anything inside the court, you put, like, a, a way to show up how to do it and make an, an easy way or yeah. something more like that. You get points. Yeah. You get points. Yeah. 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 That presentation. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. I need and like cones we, we, and targets yeah. and stuff like we, that. We talk a lot because uh, even Brazilian coaches that comes from a different school of volleyball there. Mm-hmm. So we came from, from the same school of volleyball and the, the, the way that we set up the practice is like um, the simple contact. So we have the actions of the game. Yeah. It's the pass, it's the set. We don't put it together. Yeah. We, we isolate them. Right, right. And then we have the situations of the game. Mm-hmm. Then we have the transition with a hitting. Right. And then the game itself. Right. But we, we build the practice on top of this. The right. actions of the game, situations of the mm-hmm. game. So it's a, the whole progression. Yeah. It is there. And some other coaches are different. Um, I mean, they don't want put everything targets. to be tied in. Yeah, yeah or no don't target. targets. Yeah. Or don't put goals, and we talk a lot like uh, it's a uh, athletes need a challenge. Yes, you need a task, task, and you need to complete that task. Yeah, if you don't, you're gonna go home thinking about that, and the next day you're gonna yeah. try it again. Exactly, and every athlete's very different, which is another probably the hardest part of coaching is learning how to coach each individual, right? Oh yeah, like for me, I'm, especially ten years in, like I really know what I like and what I don't like, and when I need to like just put me in a competition or like mm-hmm. if I'm hitting high lines I'll be so bored but if you put a target there I'm so fascinated target and yeah. and, and count and consequences or consequences. a competition of some sort or and put me against Trevor different. that's what I, I told <laughs> you early in the year I said hey, if the energy's low just put me and Trevor yeah. against each other yeah Cause I'm I'm not trying to lose, and I know he ain't trying to lose either. No, he right? changes. So he changes. Especially Trevor. <laughs> I can I can get yeah. competitive by myself. Yeah. He needs a, a little he something. Needs someone. He needs yeah. someone. Which to he talk owes. To. Uh, I think one acai bowl he owes to us. He owns two. <laughs> he owns two. He owns three. Yeah. Right. He owns and, three. I, and I own none because I. You owe an acai bowl if, as a coach, you hit three balls in the net. Like you're serving us, and three go out or in the net. And as a player, if you get aced or shank three in a row. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you guys do the math. I'm the only one that doesn't know what that is. I just want to, like, say that I own a Saibo because I was hitting live against you guys and we was pulling. Oh, that's right. I that was is. pulling. And after 80 balls that I hit on you guys, <laughs> <don't block>. pulling. <laughs> and he was tossing the ball. It's even worse. So then, okay, now I have my excuse. 
<laughs> and I will pay the acai bowl happy. No problem. <laughs> In what her, was it Manhattan sand? It was Manhattan sand. He was so tired. And, a bit. And it we was were, the second. We the second yeah, I hit. I hit like forty balls at the left, and then after thirty balls in the right, <laughs> say, okay, now we're like, ah, yeah. oh, come on. This is also your seventh practice of the day. <laughs> yeah, <also>. yeah. <laughs> your shoulders and falling we're just out. out. <laughs> and he's setting him four feet <laughs> off the net. Yeah, Loyola, his nickname is our horse. Horse. <laughs> <laughs> so and then that's why I say, like, come on, Don. <laughs> Come on, come on. Come on, one more. <laughs> ball. It's it's finished. You, you get that whip. You get that whip. The thing that I like most, even when these guys are just setting, 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 I just keep counting the last one. When I see this, the last one, I ask the set just to hit. Tease off. <laughs> and usually I try to I try to hit him at the bench. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Or we gotta yeah. chase it like uh, like four courts down, maybe. Oh yeah, no. Onto the strand. One thing, yeah. <laughs> One nice thing will happen. Or so I'm gonna funny. laugh, or I'm gonna hit you. <laughs> Easier when I'm setting you, of course. <laughs> yeah. I love the community. Oh my god! So and good. we we talk shit I can, all day. All right. I'll just keep going. Okay, because we have uh, we have to share the studio this evening, so we don't have uh, too crazy I'm much a, longer. I'm, yeah, I might go get Naya. Bring her on the show. Yeah. For a second. She can host yeah. for a minute. But I'm going to let you guys ride for a second. Go go check on our studio manager. <laughs> studio builder. <laughs> if you want to get, get another one, I'm not going to complain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll go uh, salt the picanha. Oh, yes. <laughs> there you go. But with you, with you guys and coaching and everything, I think it's so funny that all of you ended up here. And... Was it was like 1440 sort of the glue that brought everyone together? Because you weren't coaching with 1440, and then all of a sudden you two were the Huntington coaches, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Marcio and Arthur were the South Bay and, 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 Marcos. Uh, and Marcos were the South Bay coaches, and then Pompilio came in, mm-hmm. I think, towards the tail end of 1440. I don't know when Fiapo. Fiapo didn't come from here. Uh, 1440. Okay. No, was yeah. he here before? He was in, in San, San Diego. Diego. In San Diego. Yeah. Okay. He was living in San Diego in, in uh, doing only private lessons and uh, coaching the coast as in the indoor. Okay. But it's it's funny to see this little community. Like, is it fun for you guys to have that kind of Brazilian community all here in the South Bay? I feel like it makes yeah. it because obviously you guys like have a ton of good friends who are not Brazilian out here. But I feel like it just makes that transition so much easier to have people you can. Just like spit in Portuguese with and do whatever, and people kind of understand like where you came from and what you're doing. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and you're right. B1440 was kind of the the, the glue because yeah. it was Marcos, him, and then Pompilio came here to work with Loyola, and then right after Pompilio uh, jumped in B1440, uh, and uh, he left to to renew his visa in Brazil, and I stayed by myself in in Huntington. Yeah, and back in that days, I was like. I'm not gonna ask for help because if I ask for help and uh, so they can put someone here and then Leandro is not gonna come back. So I held there by myself with like 24 women, 24 guys. Shoo! Just you? Yeah. Man, because I remember you you coached the Wit Twins for yeah. a while. With him and then yeah. Yeah. Left. I, co- I coached with him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it was insane. And Marcos well, no, was when they arrived in P1440, they left, no? They, 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 no, they like were a, there still. They still there? Yeah. They were there still. But then P1440 um, stopped because of COVID and everything. And But I still coach a lot of people from P1440 and became yeah. a huge family. Yeah. yeah. It was a cool yeah. program. Like, the idea was awesome. And it's mm-hmm. kind of what USA is trying to do now. Like, 1440 had a really similar blueprint. What do you mean? Like, yeah. the developmental stuff? Yeah. Because but 1440s was a tiered system, and so they had sort of kind of their professional level tier that they kept a little bit smaller, and then they had the mid and development development, yeah. yeah. And then so, but they started having it being a, a kind of a pay up system. So the development and mid tier would pay basically to fund so that the professional level had free coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, it was kind of cool, and it was starting to get a little bit of steam. I thought, yeah. and people uh-huh. like love being part of the program, and they did little tournaments between all the people in that program. It was kind of fun. You'd have like sort of a South Bay Huntington rivalry between yeah. those groups. Mm-hmm. It was it was getting big and then it was unfortunate that COVID happened, I mean for a number of reasons, but yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was unfortunate. The yeah. pandemic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a bummer for everyone for multiple yeah. reasons. <laughs> well, we had teams uh, making to the main draw, like uh, yeah. Bree, Moreland, and Macy. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That was yeah. really nice, and a couple other teams. So it was it was working. Uh, even Ed Ratledge, he was in the program yeah. down there, and then he's he says until today that was my best shape, the best shape of my life. Yeah. Because all the drills and continuing drills and skills. It was telling everybody in best shape of my life. Mm-hmm. And you didn't have to... The cool thing as a player, you didn't have to plan a single practice. You just knew exactly where to go, when to go, who was going to be there. And then you had Leandro, Dan, Marcio, Arthur, whoever. They'd just be like, this is what we're doing today. You've had... I mean, you know how Brazilian practices work. You'd have 300 passes, 200 little mini passes, yeah, a ton yeah. of sets, lots of competition. It was, was great. It was exactly the, the, the philosophy. Yeah. When Marcio... Bring us like a true like let's let's give a, a Brazilian way. Yeah, like a lot of footwork, a yeah. lot of it, reps, 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 reps. Yeah, our shoulders almost yeah, paying the shoulder. Right there. <laughs> yeah. You don't care. I, I had a photo. I had <laughs> photos. My dad was here. My dad said, "Hey, brought me a bag of ice." I said, "This is your best friend." Yeah, I'm like okay, <laughs> thank you. Bag of ice. <laughs> you guys so, yeah. should learn uh, to hit both arms. Growing up, I we, know we we change we change. I change I my mechanic. both arms. You do? You? Well, of I, course. I never seen that left uh, that oh lefty. Lefty, he cannot even stretch his left arm. <laughs> How can That's he? That's why they call him You know this one, right? <laughs> Don't you know his left arm cannot cannot uh, his left? Yeah. No. His What'd you do? Like, I can stretch, but it's, it's <laughs> the, wrong, the wrong side. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's I broke why my arm two, two times. That's why he just can't play in the right. Because if he's <laughs> <laughs> him there, the ball is going to keep going. So he needs to play in the right. It's funny, nowadays we play sometimes for fun. And he was a really good passer. He has a really good ball control. But he thinks that he still has. And he does. Yeah. <laughs> so I look at him, he's standing at the court, and I'm like... My hand on my shoulder, my, my knees, and preparing. And he was, he's just standing and saying, hey, can you be in a position to pass? No, no, I'm okay. Souvenir. Hey, souvenir. <laughs> souvenir. Uh, and if I pass souvenir, like, I don't have, like, a setback. Like, I know. I have, <laughs> the ball can go there in this trend setting. Yeah, the yeah, fans, man. we should just sign all the balls before. Uh, just for, for, <laughs> for the fan that catches it. <laughs> You guys, you mentioned the the Brazilian way, and you, you went into it a little bit. That's just like a really high rep. Is that how long has that been? Kind of the Brazilian culture, where it's just rep and rep and rep and rep and rep and rep. Because and you yeah. see it like a lot of beach volleyball players right now. It looks like they're made out of this cookie cutter factory, you know. And then you see Brazilians, and they have all different kinds of techniques. You look at uh, Carol's arm swing; it's so different from an Andre, which is so different from a George and an Evandro, and. Everyone's just so different in Brazil. Is that just because you guys just like rep it out and whatever works, kind of figure it out? I can answer easy that for you. Yeah. So uh, uh, first, the, the the yeah, we do a lot of repetitions and don't play too much like here. Mm-hmm. Like well, the first thing when you arrive here, say like people play too much here, even in the indoor. In, there we prax, 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 reps, reps, footwork, footwork, footwork. Sometimes, like uh, because of the, especially in Doha, there we we practice five days, even children's here practice three days. Yeah. So and then like uh, sometimes we play Thursday and Friday, but Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is practice, 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 practice yeah. a lot. And that's the culture there. And then like uh, and about the the hits. Um, the other thing uh, we we talk a lot about here. Uh, about like uh, we saw a lot of people telling about the movement to hit. Uh, uh, we we teach like uh, uh, in Brazil just like a go with the movement to reach the ball high mm-hmm. because everyone has your individual bi- biological way to hit like the, your biomechanic. Yeah, and then like uh, that's one thing like uh, I, I got a lot here in the indoor. Sometimes, like, uh, a co- I see coaches asking that the girl, ah, come to hit and make this movement. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, uh, the girl don't have <laughs> speed enough in the arm to come back and hit the ball. And then hit in the middle of the net. And then when I teach, like, to go high here and speed, 
then boom, boom, and say, oh my gosh, what are you doing like that? It's because your movement mm -hmm. combined with this movement. Yeah. Do you understand? And uh, in my opinion, that's one thing we, we made with Try Too. The, 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 uh, it's not a ballet, volleyball. Volleyball is performance. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to score, not know how to make a beautiful arm swing. I like mm -hmm. that a lot. Do you understand? And yeah. then... Uh, 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 you can see even like in high level, high level, high level, the, I forgot the name, the, the best player of France right now, the best player in the world right now, the outsider. Indoor? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, the guy, they are Olympic champion in the... Yeah. So he, he Not lived... Tilly? He, no, I forgot the name. another... The, he lived the ball pass of him sometimes in the indoor. And he tr right oh, here. Like, <laughs> like, like Troy does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like... Uh, and and he, he, and he scored a Leon? lot. No. Oh, no. well, Leon's the best player in the world, I think. Yeah. And uh, not a um, Cuban guy? Is he Cuban originally? No, no, no. He's, he's from, from, France. from France. Actually French. Uh, and he scored a lot. Yeah. Do you understand? I think you have to find ways. That, that's why Brazilians do a lot of this, because we tell this there. Yeah. We don't like make like one like oh no your arm swing is not going too much here. Yeah, they have to reach the ball. We 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 teach them and we push them to reach the, reach the ball and don't tape. Yeah, yeah. That's the most important for us. Don't tape and then from there create your your way. It's the yeah. same thing like a, a, a and like a you. In my opinion, the, like a. Uh, you get like a professional player, Messi, uh, yeah. Neymar. Yeah, they have the way different to like a to imagine you say for one 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 phenomenal guy like that. Oh, don't do this movement right. since yeah. he's young. Yeah, exactly. and then like uh, Donacian, he has to develop his own like a movement and see how how it works. Yeah, the job of the coach is don't leave him. Hit so many times in the net, then like a, yeah. then you have to correct something. Right, right, yeah. right. But if he's doing his movements, not open up too much, or doing from here you know, and making score, it's a performance. It's For not sure, a yeah. performance. Yeah, I hate that watching like youth or like coaches who aren't as high level coaches teaching kids coming up and them just trying to be so stuck on like their specific technique. I'm like, because mm -hmm. coming from Hawaii, we have it's very ball control oriented, like. We didn't, I don't think any, I can't remember anyone ever teaching me blocking or hitting growing up. <laughs> Just passing, basically. It's all Love wall it. control stuff. And Love then it. the rest of it is like, yeah, your kids, of course, you're going to learn how to hit and block and all that. But yeah, when, when coaches come in and like want to input their technique, like the whole like um, body line, you mm -hmm. have to pass on your body line, get everything in the center. And then some people are like, no, everything has to be outside your body line. Like, I mean, can't be you're going to use, you're going yeah, to use either. <laughs> yeah. And some people are going to be very body line oriented. Some people don't want to move their feet passing and they're just really good with their platform. So yeah. it's just like, you can't Loyola, be Loyola has a sentence that uh, I use all the time. If someone tells you that this is the right way to do it and all the rest is wrong, yeah. that person don't know what he's talking right. about. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, all I used to say that a lot. So I have a girl that her mechanic is different. She doesn't bring her elbow down. And uh, a couple of good coaches, like college coaches, that she's trying to apply for college. Yeah. I'm like, no, you need to throw like ball like this and this and that. And her mom came to me and talked, and she was talking with me. I said, look, you know Tina Graudina? Have you ever seen she hitting a ball? Do you think that that's the mechanic that everybody... No, it is not. Right. It is effective? Yes. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> what else do you want me to tell you? Right. So let your, I... let your daughter do the way that she wants to do. And I put some exercise for her. And now her body is blended by itself. Yeah. Both of them. I don't think you have to quit anything to take out of anything. Yeah. You add... And let the the biologic thing happen. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. You can just like, you want a player to contact the ball higher, move the target shallower. Yeah, and then they'll hit in the net, hit in the net, in the net until yeah. they figure out. Oh, I got it. I'm contact tell it higher so it goes <laughs> down at a sharper angle. Yeah. I'm gonna tell Ricardo Santos that he cannot bump like this. 
Is that how he does? Yeah. Just one thumb yeah, in the middle. Yeah, but his hand is completely open now. The one like that. <laughs> Are you going to tell him that's wrong? That's not the way to do it? Yeah, you can tell. Ricardo does that? Ricardo, yeah. <laughs> his hand is completely open. Oh, my God. And sometimes barely square up to set. Oh, yeah. What else oh, are you yeah. going to tell? He, <laughs> and, like, he, he just okay. walks around the court <laughs> half the time. <laughs> and he's, what, the, the best blocker ever? Top three. Yeah, I mean, it has an Phil argument. Phil Anders and Ricardo. Ricardo. Al Sohn's probably in that discussion. Al Sohn's in the And in the mix, so yes. the old school guys don't scream at us. Randy Stoklos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, top five. <laughs> yeah, he's in there. He's in the discussion. For sure. But bottom line, like what you were saying about passing and everything, I sent him a video of um, Maul talking. Yeah. And uh, he, he was saying, like, uh, do, you, do you know why we're at seed number one in the world? Because we spent 10 years passing and setting. Mm -hmm. And until today, for an hour or half an hour of the practice, is passing and setting. Mm -hmm. And I remember a guy, I don't remember who, arrived and uh, I was with Marco. And the guy was like, hey, Marcos, can we pra practice joust to him? <laughs> and he was just looking at the guy's face. <laughs> Marcos, <laughs> want to practice what? <laughs> Joust, you know, when you, you joust at the net. You know, every once in a while, you joust. And, uh, and uh, he was looking <laughs> to the guy, and I was laughing already. And he was like, how many times you joust during the game? And the guy, I don't know, maybe one? Sometimes none? <laughs> yeah. How many times you pass during the game? <laughs> and the guy, yeah, a lot. Shut up, go there, let's pass. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I going to spend 15 minutes working something that you're barely going to use? Yeah. Yeah. Let's pass. That's best. Exactly. It it's kind of like your whole game. It's kind of like golf. You know, everyone goes to the driving range and immediately starts hitting driver. And my coach in high school, he was like, you hit your putter every single hole unless something incredible happens. He's like, you're going to hit your driver maybe four times the entire day today. Oh, and interesting. So we spent a lot of time on our short game. Huh. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm the short game chef. So. You are the short game chef. <laughs> no, I'm not. My putting's not that great. <laughs> Chipping. You're dialed. But it's also because my long game's so bad that it makes my short game look decent. <laughs> out of necessity. <laughs> yes. Exactly. It's just bailing me out at all times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I think our, our uh, studio boss is going to come in all right. for acting class. Okay. Yeah. So it might be time to fire up the Barbie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, before you guys go... Um, What's next for you guys? Do you know? Like, are you, are you waiting to hear back from Mel and Brandy if, if yeah. it's full steam ahead? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm still with Pepperdine. This is my challenge. And I, I told Marcio that uh, I want a ring. That is something that we don't have in Brazil. And mm. I want a freaking ring. Yeah. So that's my goal, one of my goals. And, uh, of course, next Olympic Games. Yeah. Awesome. Leandro, what's next for you, buddy? Uh, I'm I'm starting indoor uh, tomorrow again new club okay. because I was in at Surfside now I'm at CVC um, as a head coach before as assistant uh, and uh, so I have Fiapo with me in both teams okay so gonna gonna be super fun uh, Melissa Boyce is the one of the SVCs with us in the 17s. Uh, Victoria Dennis is with us okay. in the Fun. four teams with me in Fiapo. Yeah. So uh, that's the project until the, the end of the year. And the, with these guys, I have to manage <laughs> the, 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 the way to come back. He, he, yeah. he so probably going to play uh, Florida. Uh, Florida and yeah. then I'm going to be with him in the practice here. Yeah. Am I your partner? Yeah, let's go. Oh, okay. <laughs> crazy horse. Oh my God. Don't be crazy horse. We're going to beat you a song. No, but he's going he's gonna to set the uh, whole game. Oh, he's going to set the whole game. Or I'm oh, going to break yeah. someone's finger or uh -huh. bone. Or I'm going to send the crazy horse out there to hurt someone. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Maybe so, a kid uh, around the fence. <laughs> uh, yeah. It could be anyone. So we, have a, we are like uh, doing the off season yeah. with Trevor and this guy going to play uh, Florida. And then next year is the year they are 
ready, like uh, mentally ready. 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 We are ready. And we are ready. Uh, <laughs> Travel gonna have some surprises. I'm gonna tell you now. <laughs> yeah, some conversations I had when he come back from uh, where? Where he goes? New, New Jersey. New, New Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. Because uh, the year of the the is a no comfortable zone. Yeah. No like comfortable that. zone. So we have to change something. Dan told one thing today I like a lot. If you if you watch the the the, the same DVD all the time, you, you know the end. Right. You you know always the end. Right. Yeah. So we have to change this DVD. Yeah. To see what's gonna happen. I think it's only gonna happen for good stuff. I like that. And uh, I'll be with Dan next year too in the world tour. That's Love the it. Plan. Yeah. Good plans ahead. Change That's the DVD. The yeah. <laughs> change the DVD. And I'm with these guys as well. Yeah. Someone yeah. has to be there to translate everything. <laughs> yeah, someone <laughs> has to be there. Let's, to... let's change the DVD to don't climb the roof. Yeah, let's <laughs> change it. <laughs> change the DVD so the team don't climb the roof. Exactly. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're hanging out on the roof this year on the World Tour. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, awesome. gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank we thank you for him. having us. How do you say oh, shoot? How do you say shoots? How do you say like what's a casual goodbye in Portuguese? Like, okay. 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 Adios, tchau. Okay. Okay. Até logo. Até logo. Até logo. Até logo. Yeah. Até logo. See you soon. soon. Okay. Até logo. Até logo. Até logo. logo. <laughs> thank you for having us here. It was really nice. Yeah. Fun stuff. Let's fire yeah. up the Barbie. Yeah, baby. Let's go. Picanha. Sure. Yeah.